Well, I was just down at the dock playing around with this two-part swim bait and it's hot and sunny down there. So this is part two of the design and build of the uh, uh, swim bait that we started on the last video. But it occurred to me that I really didn't talk about two-part swim baits, which are really viable swim baits, especially if this is your first bait that you're gonna make or that you plan to make a bait that you're gonna troll because these are just a little easier to make stable for high speed retrieve. Let me show you how it performs high speed and low speed. Check this footage out. So even if you decide to go with just the two-part option, the information that I'm putting on this series of videos is completely going to be useful to you. Follow all the steps, all the design criteria and methods that I use, and you'll have a successful lure. Stick around. We're going back to the lure shop. Well, welcome back to the Engineered Angler and I did want to go ahead and back up a little bit on this two-part deal and show you some footage. But let's go ahead and get right to it. This is part two of this series. Uh, this time we're going to talk more about shape because we really need to refine this. We've only talked uh, about the profile shape and not the plan and the cross section. And we'll talk about joints. What kind of joints we're going to use and what kind of hinges. You'll notice that I modified the shape just a little bit. I took out the uh, sort of joints that I had sketched in there and now I want to go ahead and talk about some of the things you need to do as a designer to make sure that you start off right so in the end you're not having to sort of modify what you've done to try to get it to work that we're designing for function right from the very beginning. So you'll notice I, I drew a center line in and that's a center line that would have been right through that block that we started out with, right? This seven by two inch block. So let's imagine uh, that this is a center line of your lure. For you to optimize your chances that this lure is gonna swim uh, cleanly and uh, with some stability, uh, your best bet is to create a shape that's symmetric about the center line so that you would draw it on one side of your center line and then flop it over. Of course, this shape is kind of fat and truncated. I don't expect you to draw one like this. The point is that symmetry is really going to reward you with a simple design that actually almost guaranteed to work. If you look at this factory made, you'll see that it's really almost perfectly symmetric ab about the center line. And the reasons for that are what I'm explaining. This shape is nearly bulletproof isn't as stylized and maybe not as sort of aesthetically pleasing as the shape that you might come up with but it really almost guarantees you a good lure in contrast a shape like this which should remind you of a really popular lure the magic swimmer this is actually a, a storm kicking stick actually a good lure shape like this works really well when it's pulled fast but when it's pulled slow it tends not to swim at all now let's go ahead and analyze the shape I've created the wide point I like my wide point at about one-third the length so as you design the shape from above right you want that wide point to be reflected here as well so as I draw the plan view of my lure I want to make sure it's got a blunt start then widens to its widest point one-third of the way back it tapers from the tail up the blunt nose will create a little bit of a high pressure zone right at the front of the lure and then get that turbulent flow going quicker or earlier on the, on the body of the lure. This way it creates a deeper undulation. This general shape gives you the best chance of getting a really good swimming motion. So I've already taken uh, the block we're going to use to make this lure and I glued a piece of paper on it and then I sketched out that same fish back there. So the next piece of the puzzle in the shape is the cross section and we'll take that right at the the wide point and the cross section is basically what that shape looks like if you 
cut across it. So what I want is it slightly blunt at the top and uh, contouring down, not to a peak at the belly, but uh, a little bit less blunt as the top. So something along the lines, uniform. So I think most people would look at that and say, yeah, that looks kind of like a natural look for a lure. You do need to remember that the symmetry will continue to be important right down the middle of this. So this side and this side are the same. So now let's place our joints. And remember, we decided on doing four segments. So that's three joints. I like to use the rule of thirds. It just tends to work well. My first cut will be at the one third line. That's my first joint. For the next two joints, you could do a, a couple of different things. You can just evenly space them in the amount of lure that you got left, or you can continue the rule of thirds. That's what I like to do. It tends to work really well. And what that means is I'll come in a third, and then I'll divide what's left in two. And those are going to be where my joints are going to be. Now you can do it any way you want to. I've found that this works really well. Having the small segments of the body nearer the, the middle of the lure tends to give it a deeper wave when it's moving. Okay, let's talk about the kind of hinge we're going to use. The V hinge is very typical of a lot of lures being made out there. And a lot of you guys are using this V hinge. The drawback on a V hinge is movement. It only gives you about 15 degrees of actual freedom of movement on this thing. For me, the bigger drawback is the range of motion. It is a little weaker if you use a hinge and pin and stick your pin on the pointy part of that V. There's just a little less material to sort of support that pin. What I've used on mine on this triple belly is what I call a knuckle joint. And this is sort of a knuckle and socket arrangement. And you can see where the pins are. And it gives you a real nice range of motion. I get 45 degrees on each joint. So you can see two joints, it's a 90 degree turn. See on this one, the smaller of the segments is in the middle. And that gives me that nice deep undulation. Now I'm considering using that style joint, but I also made this, and this is my double pin hinge, and it's a big trolling lure. And it has really full movement. You can see it actually will fold in half. If you hadn't seen this, I did a video on the build, but for now, I'll show you the actual underwater shot of the action. I think I'm going to go ahead and go extreme and I'm going to use this design on this lure. That means putting hinge slots with two on each one of these segments and only one on the bag segment because I think it's narrow enough that it can deal with just having one. There'll be pins that run through. It's starting to look like an actual mechanical drawing. So let's go out to the shop and start cutting. Okay, so we've got our general shape cut out. Still need to do a lot of work on this. And in the meantime, I've got this, these little wedges that I cut off this. This is gonna serve me perfectly to find the density of this material, which is gonna help me with weight and balance.
So that's our density, 6.776 grams per cubic inch. And that information is gonna come in real handy when we do the weight and balance, which is absolutely critical. And that's on the next video. Thanks for watching. Let me know if these videos are running too long or if you would like them longer. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. Oh, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks a lot.